Well, good afternoon, everybody. Just potting around a little bit in the uh, workshop with one of my uh, Hammond organ tube amplifiers. But welcome to uh, the Eco Investment Update for November 8th, 2015. And I tell you what, it's been an exciting couple weeks since our last update. The rally in the market continues, but now we have to really be careful. We're getting down to uh, crunch time. Remember, we topped out at about 18,400 on the Dow, and we went all the way down to 15,000 and, uh, I don't know, 300 or 400. Uh, what, a 3,000 point drop, and we've recovered basically everything except uh, 600, 700 points of that decline. And here's where we got to be careful. You know, if we rush headlong into a market after it's already had what, a uh, 17, 16, 17, 18, 2,000 point rally here. You know, there is a chance that we could get our heads handed to you as this market once again suddenly and swiftly reasserts itself to the downside. And uh, once again, we're, we're in there trapped at a very high level holding stocks in what could be the next leg down in a vicious bear market. Or... On the other hand, we could be embarking and resetting back to the initial thesis that we had that, that low interest rates are creating a, a bubble here and nothing except a series of rising interest rates is going to stop this bull market. And what we just witnessed was just a steep and scary correction that has now run its course and we're off to the upside again. So here we go. We have left hand, right hand. Well, if you're going to be an investor or trader in the market, you have to be very, very careful. The only way that the light would turn green for me again is if we pass the old high on the Dow Jones Industrial Average of 18,300 change. Until that happens, I have absolute blinders on to anything else that's going on in the market because if this market manages to close over that old high on decent volume and a really good rally, I'll have no reason, no reason to believe anything except the fact that this market is going to embark on what we call a parabolic rise that nothing's going to stop it except three, four, possibly five, six interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. Now they're already putting on that on the table as a possibility for December. But, you know, psychology and bullishness follows the market. Now think about that. When we were collapsing from 18,300 down to 15,300, what was going on at 15,300? There was tremendous fear in the air. Fear about China. Fear about Europe. And fear about what's going on with the slowdowns in Greece and Spain. But guess what? When we're back up here at 17,617, excuse me, 17,700 up in that area, I don't hear any more problems about China or Europe or any of the problems that are occurring in Russia and Syria and other places. It's like the news seems to follow the market and so does the psychology. In other words, people get very bullish and optimistic after the market is already risen. And they get very pessimistic after the market's fallen. And as a result, they usually get caught in the switches. They usually get caught going the wrong way at the wrong time in a market with the result that they lose a lot of capital. We make markets prove themselves here. If you're going to go up and uh, make a new, new high on here, then I'm a believer. I say to myself, you know what, Rosie? The original thesis is back in place now. Now we can just sit back and watch the show as the Federal Reserve goes through their monthly or every other month meetings and uh, starts to push interest rates up. But I'll tell you what, guys, it's not that simple because the housing market is still very weak in certain areas and foreclosures in the nation are actually rising. We have retail sales that are rather weak here. You know, companies like Amazon and the catalog companies continue to dominate the retail space at the expense of companies like Walmart and others. In other words, the landscape is shifting underneath. 
And even though the uh, surface unemployment report, the employment report sounded good, with employment, unemployment at about 5%, the reality is people know that they're stringing two, three part-time jobs together to really effectively make ends meet. Plus, the labor participation rate in the uh, market is probably at, what, a 40-year uh, low. So there's a lot of cross-currents to fool people in here, so you really have to keep your wits about you. There's a chance, and there's still a good chance, that this market could turn down very viciously here, so we want to be prepared for that. We're effectively out of the market this, at this point. Yes, we've missed a 2,000-point rally, but we also missed a a 2,000 point fall. So it's kind of a wash right now. And this is the way you want investing to be. You know, if we were to buy here, can it be argued that we're buying at a very low level? No, it can't be. If we, uh, if we sell here, it could be very much argued that you did something very brilliant because uh, your upside is probably capped by the old time, the old all time high at 18,300. And your downside could be thousands and thousands and thousands of points. In other words, if, if you want to buy at this point in the, in the expectation that uh, we are in a historic bubble bull market, you, know, you want to make sure that you don't get trapped on the downside if you are wrong. So you want to have a very tight stopping place below, say, the 16,000 level so you don't endure what could be a... Uh, a quick, uh, quick crack up here, and on the upside, if we only manage to stumble up a couple hundred more points, you don't want to be the person who's caught holding the bag. Be smart, okay? This is what it's all about: doing the right thing at the right time. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to sit back and fold your hands like this and do nothing except watch. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in uh, two weeks, and enjoy your November. Thanks, everyone.